What happened with Palestine and Israel? What happened? Yeah, what happened? Happen? They came together after 20 some years. What? What are you talking about when you say what? are what? you talking about? <laughs> David Pakman destroys Patrick Bet David on his own podcast. Opinion of the U.S. has dramatically improved since Biden replaced Trump. I think that matters. I, I'm not an isolationist. So I think it's important that other countries respect the office of the presidency. And under Trump, it was a joke, you know, P literally laughed at at the U.N., goes to India, mispronounces 10 Indian names and the crowd is just leaving. It, it's a, it was a humiliation everywhere he went. So I think that's a great it's like a soft thing that I think is really good. So the, the fact that we're no longer feared is a good thing. I don't know where you're getting that we are no longer feared. So you think people fear Biden? W what I'm asking you is where, what data do you have that we are no longer feared? The, well, that's not a, that's, what data is not uh, any data to give. I mean, during. Well, then how do you know it is Well, the no, truth. but, but during, Bi during Biden is when Russia felt comfortable bullying Ukraine. During Biden is, uh, even if you look at Afghanistan on the way we left, people on the left were not happy by the way we left Afghanistan. Which people? Even 82 billion. Does PBD even understand that this was Trump's plan from the start and Biden just executed Trump's plan? So even if Trump was in office, the same thing would happen. Maybe even worse. And yes, people are laughing at Trump. Big politicians in the world, they think that Trump is a joke. So yeah, we were weaker when Trump was president. Give you a lot of different names. Like who? CIA, uh, who was the CIA guy that we had here who was on... Uh, Philip Mudd? Z uh, with a Z. What's his name? Uh, um, Matt Zeller? Matt Zeller, CIA agent who was on MSNBC. He called him out. He was on MSNBC with... Uh, but that's one person, right? No, but there's a lot of them, though. If I, if I actually, if I, if I actually yeah. pull it up and if, if, I, if I do the Google search yeah. on it, I'll find plenty of names from their own site. Let's do it. That's fine. But I think one important thing to back up is you first kind of gave me what's not really a very fair question. You go, are you not worried that the U.S. is no longer feared? So, so you're saying they, they don't fear. You hold, but hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish my yeah. response. Okay. Yeah. You first presented to me and these are a lot of conversations go like this. You present to me. Is it not a concern to me that the U.S. is no longer feared? And I said, well, where are you getting that? Where, where's the data? You go, oh, there is no data. So where let's first start with no, no, the, what I know, said is this, it's not the, the fear. I didn't say there's no data. You can't you can't you pull no data. data. Meaning you can't find data on fear. fear then how is, do you know that that fear the case? is action? Fear is action. Did did during uh, did during Trump Russia attack Ukraine? S no, that's did, not. Did, yeah. What happened with Palestine and Israel? What happened? Or what yeah, what happen? happened? They came together after twenty some years. What? What are you talking about when you say what? Are what are you talking about? <laughs> Hold on. Well, a he second. moved the capital to Jerusalem, is what you're saying. So let's. I don't talk know if there's that. been peace let's in the Middle East or anything like that. Has there been any progress on peace? Very limited. Did moving the cap did move it wasn't the capital. Did moving the embassy the embassy hold correct, on a second. Correct. Let me ask the question. Did moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem get us closer to peace or did it get us further further away? Do either of you guys know? I don't know if you've studied this issue. There's I have, arguments so on both ends, but it has not led to peace and prosperity in Palestine, correct? Did Trump promise this this very critical, clear question? Did Trump promise that Jared Kushner, Kushner would solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict during the first term. That's now, before, that's just a yes, no. Did he, did he promise it? Of course, it's only one promise of so many promises that Trump just didn't deliver. And he's not going to fulfill his promises. He has a record of saying things he just doesn't care about and mean to change at all. I don't know if he promised it or promises made, promises kept. He was assigned to that duty. And did it happen? Did What happened? Did Jared... Negotiate no, peace. but I don't think anybody believed that peace was happening. In so the Middle it's East. okay for him to make promises but, but that are obvious but, lies. But, but make the but a... make the make the argument. Go yeah. back to the argument about the fact that America, on all polls today, is would you say liked? What was the word you used? So, I I think the really important thing when we talk about this is we talk mm -hmm. about what we can measure. So the Gallup polling that has been done. So you for, trust polls. Oh come on! That so you, gonna, but but that's where we're going, though. There are there are there lots are, because of because I, I trust certain polls too. But I'm saying so you trust polls. If you say, do I trust a Rasmussen Republican primary poll 18 months before an election? I would say that's a, that's not very valuable. I don't right. think that's valuable. The Gallup public opinion 
sentiment poll that has been done over many, many presidents in the same way. I think that that's a pretty good poll just to give a sense of how the world feels about the American president. I have no reason to distrust that. There are other polls where I would have a specific reason to distrust. But we're kind of going like 10, 10 tangents here. I think if we want to talk about am I upset that the U.S. isn't feared, since you brought that question forward, the appropriate thing would be for you to give me the data. But no, for, go, go back to what you but, said. You said U.S. is what? You said you like the fact that U.S. is liked more today under Biden? No, I didn't use that term. What was the term you used? If you don't Globally, mind saying it again. On average, yeah. countries respect the U.S. more now that Biden is president. And, and you, Trump you is value president. that. I think it's important because okay. I, and I, can I tell you why? Sure. I think it's important because between trade and globalization mm -hmm. and problems we deal with that don't respect the borders of countries, it's important to be, again, it's not about liked, it's not about, it's to be respected globally. I do think that that actually so, matters. So why do you think they didn't like or respect Trump? Let's see what you're going to say with that. Like, why mean, do you think? Tell me. The, the guy's a joke. He is. Yeah. Okay. Tell us why. And, Bi and Biden's not a joke. Well, we can, we can talk about Biden. Oh, because Biden's like the goat and, no, 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 and Trump's no. the joke. No, 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 no. Okay, so, I, why, I'm so tell us why he's a joke. But I think it's important to say, are we talking about Trump or are we talking about Biden? No, we no. Talk so, about so both, identify both. talk about them one at a time. So, stay on Trump. Okay. Stay on Trump Fair. when he says he's a joke. Tell us okay. why you think he's a joke. Um, promises made that were not kept that he told us he was going to achieve for us. Let's look at some of them. I'm going to get rid of Ob Obamacare and replace it with his word, a beautiful replacement where everyone will have care and it's going to be affordable. Okay. Just flat out didn't happen. The one proposal that Republicans made would have led to 24 to 32 million people losing health care. I consider that a failure. I don't think Obamacare is perfect, but it's better than the think Trump thing Trump said he was going to bring us. That was that was a, just a failure. Two, build a wall across the entire US Mexico border which Mexico is going to pay for. It's not even worth having a conversation. I mean just a joke. Of course, of course completely didn't happen. Solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. No progress made in fact to be honest and this is, you know, if we want to delve into that, moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem got us further from that because it's seen as a sort of um, uh, a taunting measure, if you understand the internal politics of what's what's going on there. Um, was going to, you know, the, the made some space travel promises. I mean, we could, I can't think of promises he made that he did keep other than um, I guess the the he was going to do tax reform and he did tax reform. So as a policy matter, a complete and total failure. I do think maybe the First Step Act on criminal justice reform did some good things. I'm, I'm sort of glad to, to give him credit on that. Um, but so, you know, on policy, failure. And then, you know, on rhetoric, we could spend three hours just looking at quotes. If, if you know? so, so I'm curious to see exactly how you think now. So yeah. if, if, if COVID doesn't happen, does he get reelected? Yes. Why? Well, because his followers don't care about policy. Uh, I interview them all the time and I say- his followers don't care about policy. They don't care about achievements. They care about Hillary bad, Hillary yeah. Marxist, Hillary socialist. You think Hillary's good? Did I say that? No, I'm asking you. Oh, no, uh, I don't think Hillary was a good candidate and she's, she's to my right. Um, no, I don't think Hillary's good, but I thought she was better than Trump. She's to your right. She's to my right. Yeah, Hillary so is a very a moderate conservative Democrat. She, yeah, in your world. Yeah, yeah. Got it. I mean, give me a left wing Hillary policy, like a really left wing Hillary policy. I couldn't tell you, but that's, exactly. I'm not. I'm there not, is none. But but it's not the point. But you're saying you would much rather have a Hillary than a Trump. I would rather. Okay, so go back. To, <laughs> much rather. So, I don't know. So so go back to he gets reelected. Why? Because his. Uh, uh, voters could care less about policies. They that's what you're saying. Care less. Fine, no problem. So, but we both know that it's not the right that elects him, and it's not the left that elects whoever on the left. It's whoever's in the middle, the, the eight to twelve percent that kind of says, you know what, I'm going to go this side, you know, this time around, or versus more people come out for, 
you know, their candidate, meaning a lot Not of people really would true. come out for Obama. Okay, so explain yourself. The, the, what, it, what it actually more depends on is who chooses to go out and vote. It's less about, you know, there's, there's often this idea in politics, and there's lots of people who are really good on this issue that you could talk to, Rachel Bidikoffer and even Frank Luntz, even though he's partisan, I think he would concede this as well. He's a pollster, right. you mean, the, yes. Frank Luntz, yeah. The idea of the swing independent voter that sometimes on, on presidential elections will vote for a Republican and sometimes a Democrat, very, very small percentage of people. More common is that a candidate either activates people to vote or those same people just stay home. In the U.S., we have an embarrassingly low voter voter turnout. It's between usually usually 52 and 60 percent, I think. Mm -hmm. So almost half the electorate isn't even voting. It's less about people who vote one way and then another way. It's more about people who say, I'm just going to stay home versus I'm going to go out and vote. If they vote, it's clear. It's, so you're saying that the middle voter doesn't matter at all? No, I didn't say that. So what are you saying? Then? I said they matter much less than who who is partisan chooses to vote. But it's to fair home. to say that, okay, if, if he continues, so if he continues and there's no COVID, he would get reelected. Do you think, the, let's specifically target the middle. Forget the people on the side that would show up. Okay? Well, but why? That seems- That's the question I want to do with you right now. So if we, if we specifically... Focus on the middle. Would the middle, the independent, the libertarians, would they have chosen to stick with Trump or would most have wanted to replace him with somebody else? It's a polling question. I don't have the data. Well, you're the me. poll guy. So I'm asking you. I, I don't have the data in front okay, of me. Okay. I'd be yeah. curious to know. So you're, but, but you're also correcting me to say that's not true. That's the middle and the independents that, that didn't elect him. You're saying it's who showed up that elected him. As a general concept, right. elections swing less based on independents who sometimes vote Republican and Democrat, that's a small factor. A bigger factor is, are voters activated by their candidate or are they deactivated where they go, I don't like this person, but I'm definitely not voting for that one. I'll stay home.